it really did happen. Only a little bit of, just a little part of it might have sort of changed a little bit to make the story a bit rounder. And the reason I'm telling you this story is that this little bird whispered in my ear and said that you are working on family stories. Is that right, teachers? You're working on family stories. So, this story is a story that kind of tells you a little bit about my family. And you might be able to, after the story, I can give a few quick hints about a way to actually write your own version of this. Something not quite the same, but, but using a, a, the same kind of way of writing it. Okay. The Mulberry Dream. Before I was born, my dad planted a mulberry tree. And as I grew, it grew. And by the time I was big enough to climb into its branches, it was strong enough to take my weight. The mulberry tree grew on the wild side of the garden because over the fence from our yard, there was an empty yard. No one had ever bought that land yet. And there, the grass grew tall and the weeds swayed in the wind. But the mulberry tree didn't mind about a fence. It just grew in any direction it felt like, plunging its roots deep, deep down into the earth and stretching its branches up high, high into the sky. And some of those branches leaned over the fence. The mulberry tree in winter was naked, but elegantly so. And then, in late winter and very early spring, little green leaf buds appeared on the, on the twigs and on the branches. And then little green hairy fruits that slowly changed as the season got warmer. From green to white to pink to red to a fat, juicy, sweet, yummy, luscious, purple, ready to stain lips, hands and feet as people walked around under the tree eating mulberry fruits. The mulberry tree had a special branch. It was strong, straight and worn smooth by my feet and hands and bum because I like to sit on my special branch and I like to pretend that my mulberry tree was one in a jungle of trees and it was an African jungle African. and there were wild things in that jungle <laughs> and I was one of them and I would sit on my branch so still, so still hiding behind those big heart shaped leaves that the humans wouldn't even know I was there in fact I could often smell the humans coming before I could even see or hear them I'd go <laughs> human coming and then I'd sit even more still, and they wouldn't notice me. And my mum, sometimes out in the backyard, just near the mulberry tree, she'd be pegging the laundry on that big iron tree that spins around in the wind that you put the clothes on, and she'd put the pegs out, and she'd be saying very loudly and dramatically, I don't know where Jenny could be. I haven't seen her in ages. Some people bought the yard next to ours. It was the Andrews family and they were very, very friendly. And so we watched as the grass and the weeds were mown flat, a timber skeleton was built for the house and the golden bricks were laid. And in moved the Andrews family. But the Andrews family were difficult, to, different to our family in one big way. They were neat, tidy and particular, unlike my family. And Mr. Ed Andrews liked his gerbera garden and all his garden to only be about as high as that and no higher and no messes and certainly no messy purple splodges on his gerbera flowers and he got crosser and crosser as those mulberries landed in his flower patch and he said to my father, Alex, can't you do something about these messy splodges landing in my flower patch? They're making a mess all over the place. And my father said, well, uh, I guess, um, what would you like me to do? And he asked him to trim the, the branches that hung over the edge. No. Well, no, my father was a very nice neighbour and after a while of talking, he said, oh, okay. So he got out his pruning saw and very carefully, he trimmed all the branches that hung over the fence. Well, my beautiful mulberry tree looked a little bit lopsided now, but still most of it was there and I still had my special branch and I could still hide behind the heart-shaped leaves. So it was okay. But every year, my family went for holidays to a place not far from here, because I grew up in Brisbane. We used to holiday for six whole weeks in Burley Heads. It was 
terrific fun. We went camping and swimming and surfing, and we'd come home all sunburnt and relaxed. But one particular year, we came home to discover that somebody had committed murder in our backyard. My beautiful mulberry tree wasn't beautiful anymore. It was a stump, and it was a ring bark stump. And a ring, when you ring bark something, that means it will never live again. It kills it, and it can never shoot again. And I wanted to shout out, Mr. Ed Andrews, how could you cut down my special tree with my special branch? It wasn't hurting your chambers. But we were a very polite family, so I just ran into my room and I wept rivers and lakes. Well, time passed. I grew up. That took a long, long, long time. And eventually, I met a man called Max, who wore an enormous hat. He loved writing poetry and performing poetry, and he loved planting too many trees, just like me. <laughs> so we bought a house in Mullumbimby, which is just down the south there, with enough room to plant lots and lots of trees and have an edible forest. Trees with things to eat. And I planted out every little spare centimetre of my garden with things that could, could flower or fruit. And I was so excited. The very last thing I planned to plant, guess what it was going to be? Because by then we had a one-year-old son. And I wanted my son and any children that came after him to be able to climb in a mulberry tree and have that special feeling just like I had. To be able to eat mulberry fruits and have picnics in the shade of the mulberry tree like we used to do. To be able to make mulberry crumble and mulberry fall. No questions yet. And so, on my son's first birthday party, we planted a mulberry tree, a little mulberry tree in a special corner of the garden that we reserved just for that. We had a little circle around the tree because I live in hippie land in Byron And we blessed the tree and we wished it well. But that poor tree needed much more than a well wishes and a blessing. Because I, had, I didn't know much about gardening. And I didn't know that you really need to look after the soil before you plant some trees. And the soil was just clay and, and terribly dried out and, and we hadn't really fed it. And, and the poor tree, it just curled up its toes and died. And I had to watch as Max took it off to the tip in his ute. And I was so sad because I didn't have any space left to plant another mulberry tree. What would I do? Where would my dream of my children playing in the mulberry tree end? But luckily, we had a neighbour called Ruby next to our house. And she loved to paint colourful paintings and plant too many trees, just like us. And so she had huge rainforest trees in her garden, far too ridiculously big, really, for a backyard. <laughs> but she had planted a mulberry tree out the front of her house, even though she didn't even like mulberry fruits, for everyone to share. And she put it out on the front path so any kids could eat mulberries if they wanted to. But her tree had just stayed very spindly. It had never grown very much, and it had never had any fruit. But that year... It rained so much in Mullumbimby that it flooded. There was this much water in our garage. It didn't reach the house, luckily. But it made all the trees grow. And that little spindly mulberry tree, it grew and it grew and it grew and it got bigger and bigger until it had its first crop of mulberries. And the next year it had even more mulberries. And the next year it had more until it attracted all the children down the street who come and sit in the branches like chattering monkeys eating mulberry fruits, and what do you think the colour of their lips, hand, and feet? Purple. Exactly. Is that what you were going to say? Yes. So, the thing is though, I nearly finished my story, but I have to tell you that the thing that I'm waiting for is that I have spotted a special straight branch in that mulberry tree. And the thing that I'm waiting for is the day when it's strong enough to take my slightly older weight. And on that day, when the street is quiet, hide behind those heart-shaped leaves and I'm going to sit so still, so still, the humans won't even know I'm there.